mission. You guys have a nice flight. We'll see you back here. Welcome to Roll Call, a 126th Air Refueling Wing podcast of the Illinois Air National Guard at Scott Air Force Base. Roll Call is a podcast centered around all things people, mission, and community. I'm your host today, Technical Sergeant Ariana Freeman. This week's guest, none other than 126th Security Forces Squadron Operations Officer, Captain Chris Gotchel. We'll be discussing all things security forces, why Gotchel joined the military, his life as a civilian cop, and what, or should I say who, helps him keep up with it all. Before we get started, I want to give a warm welcome home to all of our deployers that just returned. Welcome home. And all our deployers heading out the door, or our deployers that are still overseas, we miss you. We hope you get back safe. Also, just a reminder that DEOC survey is still out. That is up until November 30th. So check your military email for that link and login instructions. Again, this is just a survey. Airmen can submit any input they have about the unit, good or bad, that goes directly to the commander. Lastly, three months left. Holy cow. So we're already three months away from December. We have our wing holiday party, December 7th in the maintenance hangar at 12 p.m. Bring your friends, your family, the kiddos, any, any, anybody that just wants to have a good time and free food, bring them. We're still looking for volunteers for that. So if you yourself want to volunteer, you know anyone who wants to volunteer, your POC for that is going to be Keeley Speck and Airman Family and Readiness Center. All right, I think that's it. I'll go ahead and pass it over to my co-host, Staff Sergeant Aaron Rodriguez, and our special guest, Captain Chris Gotchel. Welcome to Roll Call, the 126 podcast. I am your your host, Staff Sergeant Aaron Rodriguez, and today we are joined by Captain Chris Gotchel. Mm -hmm. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, So we brought you on because uh, you're a pretty interesting guy, at least... You know, from my experience, Thank you. Thank you. I've known the captain here for over a decade now. Yep. My goodness. You're getting old. Yeah, I am. I, uh, am. I yeah. feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um, so we both started in security forces together. Mm-hmm. And you were there before me, probably a couple of years, I'd imagine. Right? Yeah, 2012 was when I started. Senior airman when I came in or something. Yeah. And now you're a captain. Mm-hmm. You've changed. I have. I have. Yeah. I've grown, I like to think. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I hope you grow when you become an officer. So yeah. um, let's learn a little bit about you. Okay. So security forces, mm-hmm. what made you pick that? Uh, so what, I mean, I, I'm pretty real. So when I, when I first started, um, when I enlisted, I had two choices. It was Intel or security forces. Okay. Um, and I was told that the Intel spot, they gave it to the person that they recruited right in front of me. So uh, security so forces was next. You so missed it by that much. I missed it by that much. So why Intel or security forces though? Uh, so I had a family. So my, my late best friend, his father was a security or not security force. He was an Intel officer yeah. and a lot of the stuff, all his stories that he's done, he's that, I, that I've talked with him about, or it was, it was a super interesting career field that I, I, I was interested in, so okay. that was again the, one of the choices, and it, it wasn't there. And then security forces were there, and I picked security forces because I also wanted to get into law enforcement. Huh. So, coincidentally, I also started with the option of Intel. Well, that's, that's I was funny. out in Utah, and uh, yeah, when I when I joined up, uh, my dad gave me one piece of advice: go for the clearance, not the bonus. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it comes to that, so yep, I picked the Intel side, went to basic. When I got back from basic, they said, hey, we lost our planes, and you don't have a job anymore. <laughs> so through that route, I ended up here yeah. at the 126 as security forces. Yeah. But uh, it was a good time while I was there. Yeah. And you're still there. So yeah, it must be a I'm really good time. I'm still there. Oh, yeah, I love it. Okay. So for those who don't know, security forces doesn't quite exactly say everything that you guys do. Mm-hmm. Um, what, to the outside, who doesn't, who doesn't know what security forces is? What is that job, and what do you guys contribute to the wing? Well, so I mean, our our big mission is is air based defense, security forces. So we're we're the ones that are out there. We're you know the, the first people you see when you get on base. Mm-hmm. We're the ones you know making sure the right people can get on base. So our, security is our, is our big mission. Um, but to this wing specifically, you know, our our 
our big thing is the the, the 81 ex- exercise, you know, okay. the, our, our nuclear mission that we have. Gotcha. Um, so when what, what we do for security forces is we are out there with with the planes and we're making sure that they are secure from any threats on the outside. The correct people are getting to the planes um, and, and nobody's getting to them that is not supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Right. So the, the, those are the planes that are tasked for whatever refueling mission, for whatever nuclear nuclear mission that they have. Our task is to keep them safe and keep the right people coming onto those planes. OK. Um, and and. and that's that's in a nutshell what the, the base defense stuff is. Um, for the outsider that maybe doesn't know what we do, us being in the guard, we have kind of a special skill set that some people don't know. What um, is that? And that's um, like our um, domestic operations okay. that we do stateside. Right. Um, so we have actually been activated to go to um, Chicago mm-hmm. for the, the riots that happened. Uh, we were in the uh, D.C. for the past two inaugurations, um, helping out with um, any any type of riot control if there was any issues out there. Yeah. Um, so that's some of the stuff that we specialize that normal, maybe active duty security forces units don't get the the privilege of doing. Okay, and so. and those those special operations that uh, have happened, like the inauguration, mm-hmm. it's not just riots that you guys can tribute to right that we had that which hurricane was that several years ago and when you're the squadron went down to puerto rico yeah puerto rico All right so you, mm-hmm. you guys pulled what the airport and base security yep. at that time mm-hmm. frame and yep so we, we did our yeah we did our big our, our base defense mission down there in puerto yeah. rico when when the hurricane it was a maria hurricane maria something like yeah, that it was, yeah some it was one of the bad ones yeah it was a bad one most yeah. hurricanes are pretty bad yeah well <laughs> I, I i live down in florida now uh-huh um, I don't know if you knew that or not. I but, didn't. But now everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations. My first year down there, we had Hurricane Ian, I believe is what it was called. Mm-hmm. And it, Fort uh, Meyer, mm-hmm. destroyed yeah, that. Yeah, Fort Myers, Florida. Destroyed that installation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was on the opposite side of Florida from where I was at. But I was bunkered inside my one-story house that's mm-hmm. like a two-minute walk from um, where the, the ocean is at. Yeah. So I was a little nervous, but as it went across the uh, state, it uh, turned into a tropical storm and it yeah. just took shingles off the house. Nice. But me and my roommate at the time, we had a canoe ready to go. <laughs> we had our go bags ready to go. Nice. And a crowbar. And we, we had a, we had a uh, plan to find the first two story building that we could find and just okay. try to hunker down in there. I should have just left the state. Can I ask the question? Point. Is what what was the crowbar for? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I can say it on this podcast. <laughs> Let's just say it, it, for survival. Okay. Okay. You okay. Know? I got you. Survi- in case we found a submarine somewhere that we needed to get into and survive. And All right. Yeah, I All don't right. know. Understood. No, don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> so back to security forces. Yeah. Right. Okay. So you you, you do the domestic operations. Mm-hmm. That's a and call. base security. Mm-hmm. Uh, law enforcement. Yeah. That's another side of it. Yep. Active duty does the canine, right? Guard can't, it doesn't participate. In we the don't, we don't have of, canines right. for, for our unit. Yeah. Um, when I was with you guys, I deployed once. Mm-hmm. And since then, it feels like your deployment tempo has skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. Um, so for the deployment, what are the jobs there? And how often are people going normally? Um, what, what can uh, a, a new recruit coming into security forces kind of expect right now or in the future? Yeah, so, I mean, our, our normal deployments, um, are, you, you're usually going every two years um, on a normal deployment, uh, but depends on when you come back and your, you know, your downtime that you get for being gone. Yeah. Um, so my last deployment was in 2016 when I was enlisted, and I mm-hmm. have not deployed since, unfortunately, oh, okay. <laughs> for me. Um, but, I mean, our unit, we deploy, like I said, every two years, and then we have the random volunteer deployments that we always get volunteers for because us okay. in security forces, we love right. to deploy. Uh, why not? You know. <laughs> um, so I mean, it, it, we we do all all the we do the law enforcement, we do the base defense, so we have the back office stuff where people mm-hmm. are doing the pass and ID, getting you know um, restricted area badges for people. Right. Um, I mean, we do all the basic active duty stuff that happens with security forces. It just uh, on a in a deployed location. Okay. Um, and we have combat arms guys, the armory guys that are out there working, that are deployed, that we okay. have that are specialized here. They can do it while they're overseas too. Combat arms, what is that? Combat arms is um, it's just our our, our weapons maintenance, mm-hmm. um, and they're they're the guys that you see with the red hats walking around um, that will 
you know, train us in, in our different weapon systems. They'll train the, the base population when they have to deploy. They also have to qualify with weapons. Yeah. Um, but they, they are the ones that are out there, you know, teaching everybody how to use the weapon systems. Okay. And, and uh, does everyone in the security forces... Uh, go through that kind of training or that's an additional duty and combat arms is a specialization that you have to go to a school for. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How long is that school? Uh, nine weeks, nine I weeks. think. But those guys are, are way more hands on with the weapon systems that you guys have. Yes. And cause they, they maintain the, the armory itself too, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, so you don't, in order to be an armorer or a flight armor, you don't have to have the combat arm specialization. Oh, okay. You have to go through, but they don't do all the maintenance and stuff that combat arms can do, but you can still be a flight armorer and not be in combat arms. Gotcha. And those are the people that can just hand out the weapons when we're getting armed up or when we're de-arming, they can take the weapons back. Mm-hmm. That's about what they can do. So you, you, you ended up commissioning, mm-hmm. switching from enlisted to officer. Mm-hmm. Uh, how long has that been now? Since I commissioned, mm-hmm. 2019 is 2019. when I commissioned. Yeah, January okay. or no, March of 2019 is my actual commission date. Gotcha. Uh, do you miss the enlisted side? I do, um, but I, I on my drill weekends, I'm I'm always out with the guys training. I mean, I was always a hands-on kind of person, um, and I mean, in my civilian side, I'm a hands-on kind of guy. So I mean, that's what I that's what I like to do. I like to be out with the guys. Um, so it's. I mean, I, I know I'm no longer enlisted, but right. I'm still out there. Um, you're not. You're not stuck in a cubicle. No, you, know, you still get to be out there. Not and unless be I have to be. Guys, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, transition was that something that was difficult to do? Um, it was. I mean, it was interesting at first, but most uh, no, most of the people that I've deployed with, that I've been in the unit with, there's only a, a select few that are still there when I was enlisted, yeah. and I mean we. We, we, we maintain that professional relationship when we're working, um, but, you know, outside, you know, we're still buddies. Okay. Um, but we, we know when to, when to maintain that professionalism. It, it, was, it was interesting at first, um, and I knew it was going to be difficult, but it, it wasn't really a, it was it wasn't seamless, but it was, it was an easy transition. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, it felt somewhat natural for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say you feel the, the role pretty well. Yeah, I try to. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you said your civilian job. Yeah. Uh, what do you do on the civilian side? Uh, so I'm a police officer in O'Fallon. O'Fallon police officer. Yeah. Illinois, Just not Missouri. Can't get enough of it. No, I can't. I okay. can't. Uh, I'm assuming the civilian side is probably a little bit more exciting day to day. I don't know if you would call it exciting, but I mean, yeah, we probably we, we get a little bit more action than yeah. what we would here, obviously, on a drill weekend or because we're not out doing what the you know, active duty would do on a normal day to day. We come in and we do training on our, on our drill weekend. So yeah, I'm, I'm out there doing law enforcement, no Fallon. Okay. When I'm working. Do you have any like specialized responsibilities for your department? I have a lot. A lot. Uh, okay. <laughs> I do. Like what? Uh, so I'm a, I'm a firearms instructor for the pistol and the rifle. I'm a taser instructor. I'm a Milo instructor, which is our virtual, um, virtual training, virtual base training. Okay. Um, I am a our armorer. Um, I'm also a uh, field training officer, so I train the new guys that come in. Okay. Um, I'm a well, what we would call here a two IC. I'm a two IC out there. It's called okay. a senior officer. So second in charge. For second in charge only when the sergeant's not there. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then I am also a member of the ILEA SRT team, which is the the regional SWAT team as well. Oh wow, SWAT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of action. Okay. It can be. Yeah. yeah. It can well, it be. Just intense. It's pretty fun. What is fun about that? I, it, I, being from the military background um, and a lot of the training that we do with security forces, we do a lot of CQB, close quarters battle, mm-hmm. you know, going through room clearing and things like that. And that's, that's stuff that I've never actually military-wise been able to put into practice. Yeah. Um, but now I get to do that on the civilian side. You know, we serve high risk yeah. search warrants when people we have barricaded subjects we get called out um you know we we have a lot of specialized training that most civilian police officers don't go through that okay you know we show up and so so the training that you receive in the military and and how you guys train here in the military you take that that practice and implement it in your your day-to-day job yeah so some. so yeah i mean i've i've used uh, a lot of the tactics that i've learned in the military um and it has helped me in the 
So a lot of the things that we do civilian side, um, there's there's laws that I can't do all the things militarily that I or that I would be able to do in the military. I can't do civilian side um, just for certain use of force laws. Um, like, like what? Like if I if I go in, so when we go into a room military wise and we're we're clearing a room, we most of the time we have our weapons up, yeah. pointing ready to yeah, go. Yeah. We do that civilian side. It's a use of force, and we can get sued for that. Even just pointing a weapon at somebody. My goodness. Okay. So we have to keep. It's it's just it's it's a little bit different. Um, and there's just different tactics. There's, you know, there's what what what's the saying? A thousand ways to skin a cat. There's right. so many different ways to. Yeah. to clear a room, clear buildings, do or get sued. (laughs) There's a lot of different ways you can get sued civilian side. Um, and so, yeah, we, we just, we train every month. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, drill here. We, we, we have, we're not a full-time team, the SWAT team that we, we have. So we train every month. Actually, my training is next week. Um, and we do all of our CQB tactics. We do a lot of shooting. Um, and we're, we're, like I said, we just have a lot of specialized training. So we, are more capable. We have a lot more tools than mm-hmm. civilian police do when we have, um, you know, high risk situations. Is there anything that you've learned from the civilian job that you've used in your military career? Yeah. So um, we recently, obviously, in July, we went our DFT to Fort Leonard Wood, mm-hmm. um, and we did a full two days in the shoot house out there um, of just CQB training, and it was um, me and First Sergeant Clausen, mm-hmm. medical group. Yeah. He is also he's a Belleville police officer, and he's on the Belleville SWAT team. So he was out there with us too, and we were doing a lot of the tactics that we use on the civilian side, helping out here that maybe. We, we haven't learned because we just we do a lot of basic CQB stuff here. Um, and we, we have some different tips and tricks that we learn from the people that we go train with. We go to different training sites. You know, we train with special ops guys, soft guys yeah. um, that will give us tips and tricks that they do. So we bring it back to uh, the military side to just kind of help out, give us right. a little bit higher skill set when yeah. than just the basic stuff that we get taught. Oh, that, that's, that's awesome that you yeah. can, that you can do that. And that it, it goes both ways, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're pulling stuff from the military and giving it to your civilian job and, yep. and back and forth. Absolutely. Um, well, when it comes to the, the unit here, mm-hmm. uh, the security forces unit here, what, what would you say is the one thing you're most proud of about your guys' squadron? Uh, so, I mean, realistic, my, my troops, the thing I'm most proud of, and it's and it's just one word is our resiliency. Okay. Um, that's that's what I'm most proud of, and and it's and it's the most evident when we're doing exercises, when we're doing exercises out here. So if you remember the last one, yeah, you know we were we were all out here in right. in chem gear, yeah, right, and we've got rough. we've got a lot of people that are in chem gear inside in air conditioning, not security forces. You know mm-hmm. we're we're out we're out on the flight line in chem gear in the sun and the rain and whatever it is, yeah. Not a single one of my troops complain. None of them fall out. None of them. They we're out there doing our job, mm-hmm. and I mean that's that's the biggest thing that I'm the most proud of is that we are a very resilient bunch, and yeah, that's awesome. we we you know, we we get stuck with a lot of a lot of the crap stuff, um, but I mean we we take it in stride and we. We we unfortunately love to do it. We like to you yeah. know, embrace that suck. Yeah, I, I, like I re- to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember um, you know back when I was still with you guys, mm-hmm. that was something that was encouraged and, and um, taught a lot. Was that resiliency? Mm-hmm. Just kind of hey, we got We got to deal with the stuff that that's uncomfortable. We got to mm-hmm. deal with the stuff that's hard, and uh, that's our job. Yep, that's our job. So yeah, I can definitely see that. Definitely being something to be proud of. Oh yeah. Um, other thing I want to talk about you are a very busy person. You work night shift and you're here during the day for guard. Yeah. Right? Well, th- this, this weekend was a scheduling snafu. So yeah, uh, I, but I, I, I usually don't have to work nights on the weekend. I have drill, but okay. something happened. So yeah, I worked last night and came to drill today. So, so you're just embracing the suck. As I am. Say. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so fatherhood. Yep. Family life. Mm-hmm. How do you balance all that with your military career, which I'm assuming as an officer, you have like all the managerial stuff mm-hmm. that comes along with that. Yep. And then uh, your 500 responsibilities that you have in mm-hmm. your civilian job. Yeah. Uh, what's balancing family life with that like? Uh, I, it's my wife. That's, I mean, that's the, the only way I can do it. Just the cornerstone. Yeah, she is. I mean, she's, she's the bedrock. And I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it without her. Yeah. Um, and we, I mean, we've, 
we've had a lot of a lot of tough tough stuff that we had to go through especially with my job and mm-hmm. and well jobs plural right you know um but i mean we we work together we're a great team um and i mean that's that's the the one thing that i could say that I, if it, it would not be possible without my wife so yeah. i i couldn't do it by myself um so that 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 is the only way that i can do it yeah that, no that's that's uh, that, that should be the right answer for yeah. you so i'm glad that you, <laughs> well, that you went is. that route so yeah no but that's that's great i remember when i was having uh, my first child and family uh, responsibility was something that that your guys squadron really pushed as yep. well you know it's, it's just very important to to have that connection with your family make sure everything's good there yep. people checked in on you all, all the time and oh, your yeah. family and um yeah something you guys do really well yeah do you have any shout outs you want to make to, to anybody that's been working extra hard or, or, uh, performing really well? I mean, we, we have a lot of them. Um, so, so the one thing that I will, we actually just, we just had a board for him today. Um, so I, I don't know if he, if he's, he's on Facebook or not, but we just had a board with staff Sergeant Hamlet. Um, he's, he's newer to the unit. He came with prior experience. Um, he's a staff Sergeant. Um, but he, he's been with us for less than a year. Um, and and being, being a a drill status guardsman, you know, we don't, and we don't get to have face-to-face conversations a lot that often. So I, I, I I haven't gotten to know him as well as I should. Mm -hmm. Um, but today we, we, after the board, we had a really good conversation, but he, he has, you know, become pretty much part of the family within less than a year and just passed in, at the DFT was just a, I mean, it was just an eye opener to see yeah. what, what kind of, what kind of leader he is, what kind of supervisor he is, what kind of person he is just, to, I mean, he, he, he is an all around good man um, and really good for the unit. So that's, awesome. that's the shout out I'll give him. I'll give it right here. All right, there you go. Shout yeah. out, there shout out go. to Seth Sergeant Hamlet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, well, Captain, I'm, I'm, Grateful that you came in. Yeah. I know it was kind of last minute, but that's all right. You're, you're here. It was my pleasure. It was a great conversation. Yeah. Very interesting. I didn't know uh, all that about the the police uh, force in O'Fallon, mm-hmm. but also your your career here as well. Yeah. Um, so thank you for your input and your insight. Yeah, appreciate this. you having me. All right. Well, um, we are grateful that everybody else uh, is watching. This is Roll Call, your 126 podcast. We will see you later. You can find all our links on Linktree at L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash 126 A-R-W. You can also find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Thanks for listening to Roll Call, a 126 Air Refueling Wing podcast focused on people, mission, and community. I'm Technical Sergeant Ari Freeman, signing off. Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, traveled to Europe to strengthen international partnerships and visit airmen and guardians supporting NATO objectives in the U.S. European Command area of responsibility. The trip consisted of engagements with senior leaders in Belgium, Sweden, Lithuania, Latvia, Finland, Estonia, and Poland to reinforce the indispensable alliance that ensures security in the region. Kendall focused on the department's priorities for the NATO alliance including capitalizing on space as an operational domain, integrated air and missile defense, and the future of interoperable command and control. The Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center is developing a course designed to equip combat air-based squadron leaders with the skills needed to teach and lead combat support warfighters through each phase of the Air Force Force Generation Model. The new Combat Support Instructor course will focus on advancing agile combat support operations in an era of great power competition and bridges the gap by developing leaders skilled in managing these critical functions. The Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, or JLTV, is making its Air Force-wide debut in a simulated combat scenario during the second annual Advanced Recapture and Recovery Operational Warfighter Exercise, or ARO. The JLTV is intended to provide increased crew protection against IED attacks, improved mobility, and higher reliability. With the introduction of the JLTV's capabilities in the field and with continued exercises, teams are given the chance to prepare and analyze their skills in a training environment specifically designed to mirror the challenges of the missile field. 
That's your look around the Air Force. I'm Staff Sergeant Milton Hamilton.